Hello friends, welcome to e Patshala. I am Shagun Sharma, Assistant Professor in Political Science in Government College for Girls, Sector 42, Chandigarh. The module which we are going to discuss today is interdisciplinary and the study of international politics. Interdisciplinary does not reject the idea of academic disciplines. In fact, it makes all the disciplines talk to each other so that they do not develop as mutual aliens. Therefore, interdisciplinary does the task of making the interactions between different academic disciplines possible. At the same time, if these disciplines want to develop or evolve on their own, it tries to bring their limitations so that we can have a wholesome and comprehensive study. Interdisciplinary is a form of transgressive practice that involves purposefully combining two or more academic disciplines to create new knowledge. At least this is how the term is familiar to many who have heard of and practice it. The following description of Karl Marx's approach in Capital provided by David Harvey helps us make a telegraphic sense of what this practice entails. For Marx, new knowledge arises out of taking radically different conceptual blocks, rubbing them together and making revolutionary fire. Three aspects of this statement are instructive as they further clarify the meaning and nature of interdisciplinary. First, the method of Marx that Harvey describes, that of clubbing different conceptual blocks, indicates the essence of interdisciplinary. Any interdisciplinary effort requires combining two or more disciplines. Marx adopted at least three different traditions of thought, classical political economy, philosophical reflection and inquiry, and utopian socialism in capital. Second, the outcome of this method is new knowledge. Whichever way we choose to understand newness, interdisciplinary results or is expected to result in new perspective. Our understanding of the workings of capitalism is given to us by Marx and his ideas are still illuminating. Third, the new knowledge produced by an interdisciplinary method is purposive. These purposes could range from social transformation and revolution to correcting a lopsided account presented by a disciplinary tradition. Thus, interdisciplinary involves some form of boundary crossing, creation of new knowledge and commitment to purposive action. Social science disciplines took shape in the 9th century, the period in which Marx wrote. It is even argued that disciplines were constructed in response to Marx's interdisciplinary dialectical approach. An outline of the emergence of social science disciplines. The trajectories of social science disciplines differ across contexts. Nevertheless, it is useful to view the emergence of social science disciplines as a series of intellectual responses to the extraordinary transitions attending the modern West. Modernization involved large-scale restructuring of human lives in the wake of several revolutionary processes. An emerging secular outlook required new anchors for new knowledge as the old religious ones were discredited. Need was felt for a new corpus of knowledge about politics that put people at the center of ideas about political authority. Capitalism was swiftly pioneering a vastly new mode of economic activity and it too had to be understood. Industrialization led to migration of humans from the countryside to the cities, causing upheaval in the existing patterns of human habitation. As cities were populated by these new human groups, the population's strategies and policies had to be devised to manage and govern them. From the late 18th century onward, processes of modernization created the need for lending new order to Western societies and the state, which had also emerged through the workings of these modern forces was more suited to carry out this task. The quest for a new human order required considerable intellectual support, which was expected from the universities that were funded by the state. This is of course an outline. Trajectories of social science disciplines differed across western states. 
but it serves as a useful background to understanding interdisciplinary. The key trend to note in this outline is the close relationship of social science disciplines and the geopolitical formation we commonly call the state. Western states experienced a long peace at home between the early 19th and early 20th centuries and this enabled both the new human order and the social science disciplines to influence and emerge alongside each other. Soon however the states began experiencing crises that were simultaneously external, political and economic and these jeopardized the existing social order or what was later described by Karl Polanyi as market society. The threat to this social order came from the alternative socialist model of human order, a twisted version of which was being practiced by the Soviet Union that the populations in Western Europe and North America found appealing and were struggling to establish. The market society would have given way to a socialist society had they succeeded. However, this threat was met by a combination of state coercion and introduction of extensive welfare programs in the United States. United Kingdom and France and through fascism in Italy and Germany. In the meanwhile, it became increasingly clear to critical intellectuals that social science disciplines were deeply complicit in perpetuating state policies that prevented societies from becoming socially just, economically equal, tolerant of diversity and intellectually emancipated. These efforts at overcoming the crisis could not prevent the disastrous Second World War. The enormous war shook the foundations of Western social order and therefore of social science disciplines. Some interesting developments took place at this stage. First, while several of the social science disciplines seemed set to decline from here onward, the discipline of IR began to rise and take shape. Second, even though American leadership of the world capitalist economy enabled many Western European states to once again prevent their societies from turning socialist, it could not stall academic intellectual currents within these societies from turning both anti-disciplinary and anti-capitalist. One result of this was that in many European countries, disciplines gave way to radically new modes of analysis in which society, economy, politics, history, psychology or philosophy were not seen as distinct domains of human affairs but rather interrelated and interdependent ones. The body of knowledge described as post-structuralist and post-modern reflects the spirit. Given the prevalence of this temper, therefore, IR expectedly did not find favor in much of Europe where resistance to academic disciplines was strong. It could only develop in pockets of the European continent, the UK being the most prominent. American leadership of the capitalist world also meant that IR became, in the words of Stanley Hoffman, an American social science. Calls for making disciplinary boundaries porous in the pursuit of social knowledge have grown since the late 1960s and more so since the end of Cold War. Many scholars argue that the world as a whole has entered a new phase of transitions during the past five decades. In the light of these trends, it is argued that our pursuit of knowledge must also overcome disciplinary barriers which reflect the predominance of the state and engage with other disciplines in order to study social problems. This argument reiterates the fact that academic disciplines are tools for studying social phenomena such as international politics and that they reflect the composition of the social world. Disciplines disciplinarily and interdisciplinary. A discipline can be said to exist if in relation to it we can think of a field of study, a particular point of view, presence of certain theoretical perspectives, methodological agreements on how inquiry should proceed and continuity in knowledge sharing between past and present scholars and among peers. Adherence to disciplinary norms strengthens the disciplines and produces the practice of disciplinary. Disciplines flourish for two primary reasons. Clarity is one of them, convenience is another. Disciplines classify, categorize and so make it possible to think of the world conceptually. Conceptualization is a tool of interaction that lends immense clarity to our efforts of making sense of complexities surrounding us. 
but disciplines also accumulate knowledge which makes it convenient for future scholars to try and make better sense of reality and not duplicate the efforts of others this condition is amplified in ir as it has little difficulty proving its utility to state policy and other real world problems but this is not surprising the modern world seems increasingly covered by a pall of utilitarian sensibility if so much goes in the favor of disciplinarily what are its key limitations as disciplinarily takes hold in the study of any phenomenon scholars tend to separate that phenomenon from the larger domain area or field within which it is located this separation can over time lead to studies of the phenomenon in isolation from the larger social world of which it is a part balance of power was initially studied within the context of nations where it occurred the bid to turn the phenomenon into a concept and a law has increasingly led to it being studied in a social context and along the lines of inquiry more prevalent in the technical and natural sciences disciplinarily also results in studies of the same class of phenomenon thus narrowing the range and quality of newness produced by such research this shows another limitation of disciplinary namely that after a certain stage it tends to produce knowledge in response not to social problems but to the over narrowing and specialized debates carried out within university departments if practiced over time disciplinary could also cause scholars to lose reflexivity the awareness that knowledge is contextual and carries normative implications reflexivity may elude us even as we profess it interdisciplinary has become desirable because it promises to cover areas that disciplinary leaves out it appears better suited for a world where problems like globalization nuclear proliferation environmental crisis and terrorism occur either below or above the scale of the nation state the discipline of ir is known for its resistance to interdisciplinary there is widespread impression that ir is averse to interdisciplinary learning and that its gatekeepers work to marginalize scholarly attempts that try to bring newness to the discipline from other disciplines though these impressions are prone to some exaggeration it is nevertheless important to ask why this is the case some peculiarities marks ir as they do other disciplines and familiarity with at least two of them at the outset is useful first it is often noted by students of the discipline that ir is a relative late comer to the canon of modern social sciences by the time ir became a discipline in its own right other major social science disciplines such as economics sociology history philosophy political science were already on the decline in europe and under revision in north america second as noted above ir has also been described as an american social science these two features explain to a considerable extent the high degree of disciplinary consciousness prevalent in ir as well as its resistance to interdisciplinary the feeling of being a late comer to social sciences canon implies that the discipline has had a lot of catching up to do scholars seem driven by the objectives of attaining for ir the coherence autonomy and status similar to other social sciences it seeks to create new knowledge more by refining the foundational claims acceptable within the discipline and less by referencing other disciplines its evidence is the trend that disciplinary ir realists are relatively less interested in how realism and the ideas of the real the realist and the realistic have been conceptualized in other disciplines and have been more concerned with identifying various forms of realism found in writings on international politics such as classical human nature and structural and creating new variants of realism such as neo realism offensive realism defensive realism and neo classical realism disciplinary ir is interested in an old kind of newness not new the proximity with the governmental apparatus and the desire to influence state policy has indirectly but determinedly influenced the discipline more in the direction of policy at the cost of theory 
द इनक्लाइनेशन फॉर पॉलिसी हैज कैप द आई आर थियोरेटिकल डिस्कोर्स अवे फ्रॉम अटेनिंग द सोफेस्टिकेशन एंड मेथडोलॉजिकल अश्योरनेस फाउंड इन अदर सोशल साइंसिस that ir significantly invests in preserving its autonomy as a discipline is also clear from the nature of its gate keeping practices its degree programs are a comprehensive tool for reproducing conventional wisdom of the discipline the range of research methods that are considered staple for disciplinary ir and taught to research students is also narrow those ideas that steer the study of international phenomena closer to models of natural science are privileged introduction to august comte's positivist perspectives of conducting social inquiry is followed by the accounts of demarcation of science presented by karl popper and the story of the progress of science by thomas kuhn from the perspective of disciplinary ir critical interdisciplinary approaches such as post modernist feminist and post colonial may have interesting insights to offer but these would need to develop into theories with their distinct research programs in order to move from the margins to the mainstream of the discipline disciplines seek to preserve their core and so does ir however these practices appear extraordinary to those who work on the margins of the discipline as well as to scholars working with interdisciplinary frameworks but as we take cognizance of these trends it is equally important to be aware that major works in ir have emerged from scholars who have borrowed extensively from other disciplines or worked with multiple traditions of thought norman engel and leonard wolf whose writings partially precipitated the foundation of ir wrote in response to problems of international cooperation and war and borrowed extensively from several established disciplines and their experience as authors and public intellectuals reinhold niebuhr one of the first in the line of american political realists was a theologian ethicist public intellectual current affairs commentators and university academic these influences are evident in the in his moral man and immoral society and the irony of american history e h cars the 20 years crisis which is one of the foundational texts of disciplinary ir reflects its author's background as a diplomat and primary vocation as a historian hans morgen thu too was deeply familiar with european political and legal thought and integrated attention to international law in his studies of international politics if walt's man the state and war shows his background in political theory his theory of international politics makes clear how heavily he borrows from anthropology microeconomic theory leninist thought and likatosian research methods The mainstream version of constructivism offered by Alexander Wendt with social theory of international politics as its comprehensive statement involved intensive interdisciplinary. These examples illustrate that innovative works in IR have almost always been interdisciplinary. How do interdisciplinary and the study of international politics appear from the perspective of places like India that have been absent from the narratives of the emergence of the discipline if ours is the world of nation states and if international politics is the study of politics among nations then we must pay attention to something that continues to be ignored for the terms international to be representative of the world it describes it must take into account interactions between most nations of the contemporary world this requires acknowledging that most of our nations were created constructed or imagined through and often in opposition to the workings of colonialism india is an apt example of such a nation it follows that any study of international politics that avoids recognizing this more accurate meaning of the international as a concept cannot offer a representative account of the modern and contemporary world politics it also follows that disciplinary ir which remains largely silent about colonialism and its role in making the most of the contemporary world offers a woefully partial perspective one that privileges the experiences of a handful of western states power formations related to them what do colonialism and the histories of most of our nations mean for disciplinary ir and the study of international politics
the essay now engages these questions and argues that interdisciplinary is essential to studying international politics from the perspective of this most of the world silent histories of the disciplines if the disciplines were constructed in the west how do we in the rest the most of the world relate to it it is useful to meet this question frankly and not shirk it because location shapes social knowledge including the knowledge of international politics the old sensibility about the world looking different from different places is still very relevant that history too consolidated its authority as a discipline of consequence in a similar fashion could be gleaned from the claim advanced throughout the 19th century by eminent european scholars that non european societies did not possess history apparently they were vegetating in the teeth of time it is also implicit in the absurd and debilitating imposition of the european periodization of historical time on the histories of places such as the south asian subcontinent the history of india for instance gets periodized according to the european scheme of ancient medieval and modern more damagingly it has meant that values attached with these periods in europe the ancient as the golden age the medieval as dark or barbaric the modern as the age of enlightenment reason and progress have become associated with indian history it would also be interesting to wonder how tb mccauley's opinions on colonial india shaped the whig interpretation of history to which his writings provided a new orthodoxy in the 19th century Furthermore, as Weber set about constructing sociology, he felt it necessary to include the studies of Indian and Chinese religions to complete his sociology of religions. Even before Weber, Marx felt a similar necessity to include discussions on the Asiatic mode of production to complete his account of the global workings of capitalism. The Asiatic addendum to the Marxist Ovier has caused considerable embarrassment to subsequent Marxists. Finally, there was always in geology a discipline constructed to study those exotic aspects of the South Asian life world that were considered curious enough to warrant scholarly attention, but not worthy of being studied within the fold of core disciplines like sociology, history, political science, and economics. Academic fields more closely associated with IR were no differently formed. Political theory from disciplinary IR borrow some of its key philosophical postulates about the nature of international politics and the source of conflict has shaped its sensibility by passing judgments on non-Western societies. Scholars working from a critical standpoint in legal studies have similarly highlighted the extraordinary extent to which international law has been shaped by experiences of non-Western populations and places. Tarek Barkhavi and Mark Lafay have shown how Eurocentric security studies erases the role of the Global South in security relations. Joseph Nye, a leading American scholar of IR, observes that international relations theory is constrained by the fact that history provides a poor substitute for a laboratory. The claim is misleading. Some of the key concepts that became the staple of IR have emerged not merely through interactions of Western powers among themselves, but also upon their conduct in the non-Western world. By definition, great powers possess extraterritorial influence. This implies and has usually meant their ability to intervene and influence outcomes in most of the world. The Anglo-French great power rivalry during the 18th century did not affect Europe alone. It also determined political outcomes in many parts of the world, including in the subcontinent where British victory over the French in the Carnatic Wars hastened the demise of the Mughal Empire and the consolidation of the new colonial system of rule. Several IR textbooks note that Britain was the balancer in European power politics during the 19th and the first half of the 20th century. Disciplinary IR and the claim of sequentiality. The most of the world was not merely a laboratory where the Western disciplines were shaped. The world at large was shaped by how populations in most of the world responded to European influences. 
the eraser of the role of the most of the world in constructing academic disciplines of the West must not be seen as a large scale oversight. Rather, the non recognition of these histories serves the tactical purpose of enabling disciplinary IR to hold its dominance over the study of international politics. The academic study of international politics in most of the world followed the disciplinary line to a considerable extent. The Indian example is instructive in this regard. The imagination of Indian IR substantially resembles its Western, specifically American counterpart. The entire imaginative architecture of American IR, its key assumptions, the problematic important theories, key texts can be found present in the practices of Indian IR. Echoing the American model of giving primacy to the sovereign state as the primary actor, much of the IR scholarship in India takes independence and the emergence of sovereign Indian state as the starting point of its analysis. It remains vague or indifferent about the entire pre-independence colonial modern period, a period during which the colonial Indian state was constructed. A particularly strong indicator of the extent of similarities between the two variants is the almost uncritical acceptance in India of the normative claims about the discipline prevalent in American IR. Recovering Simultaneity can an interdisciplinary perspective on world politics help us recover this simultaneity? It can. It can also help revise the study of international politics by throwing new light on the familiar terrains of the disciplinary IR. It is not very difficult to see that IR offers a narrative that privileges the West and erases the role of the most of the world in the emergence of international politics. Uncritical adopting of the disciplinary matrix of IR in places like India, which have historically been and are a part of the most of the world, tends to perpetuate lopsided accounts of the nature of international politics. Under the influence of the disciplinary perspective, an IR scholar from the most of the world considers the histories of her location, country, region or continent as being irrelevant or marginal to the study of international politics. This explains why there exists no serious awareness of the pre-1947 colonial period of modern India in Indian IR imagination. Even though colonialism is one of the key global phenomena of modern times. Hardly has IR scholarship sought to establish the possible implications of colonial practices of this period on our understanding of international politics. Furthermore, it can cause misreading of the foreign policy priorities of a state. The practice of disciplinary IR in the most of the world reveals these major limitations. These limitations can be overcome if we adopt an interdisciplinary approach that could tell the story of international politics from the perspective of the most of the world. However, interdisciplinary here cannot resemble its standard meaning, that of combining methods or approaches from two or more disciplines. If disciplines shaped elsewhere produce misleading accounts of our past and present, an idea of interdisciplinary shaped elsewhere is unlikely to provide better accounts. As scholars like Chatterjee, Kaviraj and Nandi have shown, interdisciplinary in the context of most of the world implies extricating ourselves from the constraints of disciplinary knowledge while subjecting this knowledge to critical review. Since the most of the world do not have a separate discipline of their own, a narrative of international politics from their standpoint cannot be anything but interdisciplinary in this sense. To adopt an interdisciplinary stance on international politics then is to view with suspicion the fundamental claims of disciplinary IR. But suspicion must be also accompanied by arguments of our own. These arguments must be made not because they are morally superior or are likely to reflect some pristine indigenous wisdom. We must advance them however unusual they may appear because they can provide a corrective to the lopsided understanding of international politics we currently have. International politics from the perspective of the most of the world. An interdisciplinary view of international politics privileges the most of the world and differs considerably from the disciplinary reading on several counts. 
First, it guards against claiming as mainstream disciplinary IR stance does that international politics resembles a historical template of interactions between powerful actors. While that claim may be central to at least some disciplinary perspectives such as realism, an interdisciplinary view considers it skeptically because of the sweeping yet partial nature of the claim. To suggest that conflict is always possible in interactions between powerful actors is to reiterate what appears intuitively plausible. There is nothing that is not already known here. Besides, the focus on powerful actors even on the plea that a few powerful actors matter more than a great many weak ones does not escape the handicap of being partial in that it ignores a variety of non-powerful actors. These non-powerful unimportant actors of disciplinary IR are central to international politics from an interdisciplinary vantage. Moreover, the interdisciplinary approach emphasizes the features that make politics in the modern world novel and consequential in both desirable and undesirable ways. This approach enables us to conceptualize politics as an arena that gets manifested differently in different parts of the world and not divided between two domestic and international domains. Second, from an interdisciplinary viewpoint, it is difficult to accept sovereign states as the most important actors in international politics. This is because at least some of the most powerful sovereign states also act as imperial formations of power who are often aided by imperial formations of capital and these combine to act upon the world in deeply significant ways. Third, the organization of the discipline of IR has been around the ideas of peace and war. According to the standard disciplinary narrative, war, armed conflict of a significant scale between sovereign states is a constant possibility in international politics. Establishing and sustaining peace, which is defined as absence of war, is the key problem that drives the work of many disciplinary scholars. Without undercutting the relevance of this peace and war paradigm, the interdisciplinary stance brings into view other paradigms that operate in relation with the dominant one. Fourth, an interdisciplinary perspective throws a different light on the location and effects of anarchy. Disciplinary IR suggests that anarchy pervades the international arena and that the logic of anarchy causes competing state actors to enter into conflicts that can escalate to become interstate wars. Fifth, the interdisciplinary perspective on world politics reveal those subtler divisions of the world that have remained obscure in the face of proclamations that the world has been divided along geographic, ideological or civilizational lines. Sixth, Interdisciplinary helps us identify specific issues of international politics and subject them to non-disciplinary investigations. Such exercises can establish the contingent and constructed nature of the disciplinary thinking. Non-disciplinary investigations can reveal the limitations of disciplinary knowledge. Now let us summarize this module. Interdisciplinary perspective has brought the population in the world of international politics because international politics as a discipline has always sought to bring institutional framework or state-centered approach uh, in its academic study. But contrary to it, interdisciplinary tries to bring the perspective of world together. Interdisciplinary thus brings what the viewpoint of subaltern or marginalized population is because all the marginal groups like uh, workers, peasants or uh, any other trade union uh, people, they have brought the stage of international politics to a new level and the governments respond to these actors in a very different manner.